Hi, I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out Nashville Scoring Strings by Audio Ollie. The long-anticipated Nashville Scoring Strings has just landed, and I've been itching to check it out. Promising to be a new benchmark in core string libraries, Nashville Scoring Strings is looking for an immediate place in your template. Is it worthy to be the king of strings? Let's check it out together. Nashville Scoring Strings requires the full version of Contact 5.8 or above and requires 45 gigabytes of hard drive space. There are both the original and denoised samples along with a second set of edited samples to create a B patch for every articulation. There are separate instruments for violin, viola, cello, and bass, as well as full ensemble and multi-patches. Nashville Scoring Strings is available from Audio Ollie for $499, but is available for the introductory price of $349 through December 1st, 2020. And so today we're checking out Nashville Scoring Strings, but before we dive into the library, I thought I would just share a quick mock-up I did today just to kind of let you hear um, some different parts of the library together to let you feel how it blends and, and just give you a chance to check out a composition made with it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play and then we'll jump into the library. And now let's dive into the library. So today we're checking out Nashville Scoring Strings, and I'm really excited about that. As many of you out there, I always love a good string library, and Nashville Scoring Strings, for a number of reasons, has gotten me excited. Um, I, I've always loved Audio Ollie's LA Modern Percussion, and when I heard they were doing Nashville scoring strings, I got really excited for one thing. I live in the Nashville area, so that was an exciting thing. But then also, I'm just a string geek like many of you guys out there. So we're going to check it out today, see if it deserves a place in your template, if it should replace some other core string libraries you have. Um, I think you're going to like what you hear. So as we start out, I just want to point out a few different things to you. Um, you're going to notice that with Nashville Scoring Strings, there's a number of different things going on. For instance, when you open it up, you're gonna notice that there's two different sample folders. And what I've done is I've actually split out those sample folders. One is the original denoised samples. So those are the ones before they've went through any kind of noise reduction processes. I've called that the original. So I've just made a second instance here. And then you've got the denoised samples, which are a little more polished, um, a little more, I guess, studio-like, Personally, I love the originals. There's just something about the life and the movement in the room that just to me sounds so, I don't know, it just sounds more alive to me. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the originals, which I think you're gonna really enjoy. So when you go into the original folder, you've got your instruments, your multis, and you also have a symphonic library. And with 
Nashville scoring strings, it's not quite a chamber size. It's actually a little bit bigger than a chamber size um, that you would get in a normal chamber strings environment, but it's not a symphonic size. So what the developer has done in this instance is created, um, of course, given you the original recordings with um, you know, the, the library that's a little, or excuse me, the orchestra that's a little bit bigger than a chamber, chamber orchestra. Um, but the symphonic actually combines both what they call the A samples and the B samples to create a symphonic sound. So the B samples, which we'll get into a little bit later, they're the exact same samples recorded by Audio Ali for each of the articulations, but they're re-edited to essentially make a second pass. So combining those together really gives you a fuller, more symphonic sound. So as we dive into the instruments folder, we're gonna do we're gonna start with the regular instruments instead of the symphonics, let you hear the original ones. You've got violins, violas, cellos, basses. Um, your full ensemble patches, and a couple of additionals. So I think a good place to always start with a string library is the full ensemble. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Let's start with the Collegno. And as we look at the interface, you're gonna see that there's four mic positions. To me, as you'll, as you'll hear here in just a moment, the microphone positions are really the strength of this library, in my opinion. Um, the mic, the mics are just so good in here, and in combination with each other, the the sound of the room is just really, really wonderful. So you've got the different mic positions. You've got close, deca, wide, and surround. Um, you have some advanced controls, which we'll get into a little later. A modulation map. So let's go ahead and just hear what it sounds like out of the box. Collegno. Really, really nice sound. So let's go ahead and play with the mics a little bit. I'm gonna give you some close mic. Let's throw some wide on there. And we'll go through each of these mics individually as well, but just to give you a sense of what you can anticipate when you, when you add these together. Really, really nice full sound. All right, let's go ahead and move. We've got a whole lot of articulations to get through a whole lot of different files. So the consordinos, from what I understand with Audio Ali, these are not truly recorded consordinos. These are actually created from the samples. So there's a lot of editing going on here to give you the consordino sound. Also want to show you what the mod wheel does of course with the dynamics it's difficult to do it when you're playing with two hands so I'm just gonna play with one here so you can get a feel for that Really nice dynamics there. Let's check out the close mics. You're gonna notice that this library is really, really dry, um, which some people love that, some people hate it. 
I personally really like it. You know, out of the box, it doesn't smack you in the face, the, the room noise, like it does in some of the other libraries from other developers. But what I love about that is it allows you to add your own reverb to really blend it in with your composition so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb by being recorded in a different room. The sound quality of these recordings is just really, really good. So I really like that you can, you know, pad that with your own reverb. So let's check out the close mic. Moving right along, harmonics. Let's check these out. This is maybe my favorite articulation in the bunch. And I'm gonna, you know what? Let's throw on, let's get rid of the close. Let's just go with some wide here. Beautiful, beautiful. Love those harmonics. Let's try out the surround mics on that. And I'm going to play with the Mod Wheel Sun. Just play with the right hand to give you a feel for that. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, the Longs Alt Sordino. And I need to check. I, I said that the that the Con Sordino was uh, edited. I believe that's the case. I don't believe they record they were recorded as true consort. I might be misspeaking there, so I want to just put that little disclaimer in there when I see the Alt Sordino. It might be referring to that, but something definitely to check up on. Let's go ahead and do a combination here. Let's take out the close and let's just do the deca, the wide and the surround. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and moving right along here, let's check out the longs. Now, one thing I want to tell you about the longs is if you hold down the sustain pedal, there, pedal, let me say that right. If you hold down the sustain pedal, there's actually a rebo feature for all of the longs and the legato. So if you, you know, push the same note twice in a row, you'll get a rebo. So let's try that out.
Oh, just really, really gorgeous. Let's throw some close on there. And how about we do the surround, close and surround. Give it a little bit of definition and a whole lot of the room. And now without the mod wheel. Uh, you can tell if I go through every one in this detail, this is going to take forever. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. Let's do the Mercado. And pizzicato, let's do some close on this with a little wide. Lots of detail with a little bit of room. One thing to note as well is that there is a sample delay that you'll need to account for on your shorts. So if you go to the advanced tab, you'll see the sample offset. Um, the sample offset for this library is minus 140 milliseconds. So one thing I will say is, you know, if you're trying to play this in live into your doll, it can get a little bit, you know, tricky if you're trying to do that. As you can tell, just when I'm playing now, it's hard to stay in time with that delay. So I would recommend turning the offset completely up um, so that there's no delay. Of course, that does change the sample. So use that when you're recording it. And just remember to set that sample delay in your doll to minus 140 and take it all the way back down so you can get that nice full sound. One of the things that Audio Ali explains as they're doing um, their walkthrough video is that because of the way they recorded these, these shorts were taken directly out of um, sourced performances. So instead of just recording individual sample notes, they were actually having them play, you know, um, entire sections of a song, and then they would extract those notes from that. So because of that, you know, it's a little bit fuller, it takes a little more room. So I'll give you an example. Without the offset, or excuse me, with the offset, you'll hear something like this. And we'll turn it up. So it just loses a little bit of the luster. Let's let's jump over. I think is the spiccato next. Yeah, spiccato's next. So this will give you a really good idea of that. So we're gonna go over here and just give you that same example on the spiccato. So 
you can just tell it takes a whole lot of the life out of them. It's great for playing it in though, which is what I did for my composition earlier. Um, you know, for playing it in, it's perfect to turn it up. Just make sure to always put your, you know, your delay in there as well when you, when you move back. Um, there is also a note interruption feature, which we'll get into in some of the longs. The note interruption is essentially, it's going to, anytime there's a note crossover, it's going to cut off the decay of the overlapping note. So that's something that you can use there. But let's go ahead and play with the spiccatos here in the full ensemble. We've got the close. I'm really finding that I enjoy, uh, I, I really enjoy just getting a lot of the room sound in these spiccatos, but then also getting the detail. So check this out. Oh my goodness, I have to say <laughs> that sample delay, uh, you know, if you, if you're a person who uses a lot of step sequencing, it is not a problem for you, but it is really, really difficult in my, for me, if you're wanting to play fast spiccatos, it's difficult to do that. Um, so, you know, you're not going to get that full lush sound. If you try and do that, you're going to have to turn it up. So just as I'm playing here, just keep that in mind. That's why you're hearing anytime I try and go fast, it really gets broken quickly <laughs> because it's hard to stay in time. have a hard time doing that. That's, that is difficult. <laughs> the spiccatos are gorgeous. I absolutely love them because as you let's go back just for a moment. As you can tell when I'm playing them, I mean, they just are full of life. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, moving right along. Now we're into the tremolos. The tremolos, always have a hard time saying that. All right. And the trills, there's a couple of different ways you can do the trills. So with the trills, you can do velocity. If you barely push it down, you're going to get a minor. If you push it down hard, you're going to get a major or you can change it to played and you can actually hold down. So you'll see here, you can hold down your intervals. So if I do a minor interval, I personally love doing it that way, but you can also do it this way. Velocity. So you can do it either way. Moving right along, 
All right, so now we get into the B patches, which I'm not really gonna do in the full ensemble. We'll get into those more as we go into the individual instruments. But again, these are the same samples, just reprocessed, re-edited to give you something that you can layer to make it symphonic and also to give you a little bit different flavor in each of the articulations and instruments. So let's go ahead and jump into the violins. And I'm gonna turn on this close mic and here's the collegno. And let's go into the consordino. Let's throw, let's take the close down, maybe put on some surround, little deca. And the harmonics, let's throw on the surround for this. I really like putting a light, a lot of um, ambience on the harmonics just to give it that real room sound. So let's, let's kind of go crazy on these. Let's go down with the deca, but the wide and the surround, let's go crazy on those. Gosh, those are just beautiful. Really love the harmonics here. All right, let's go into the legato. And actually, let's start with the regular legato. Um, the legato, so a few things to note in the legato um, and just about the library in general. There, uh, there is no portamento. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for portamento controls or for, you know, the ability to use your velocity to trigger portamento, that's not something that's here. There's also no vibrato control. So, you know, that's a couple of uh, potential weaknesses. The one thing I do like, though, is because these are sourced from live performances instead of individually sampled notes, that portamento and that vibrato is kind of baked in. So it just kind of kicks in at the right amount. I don't know. In my opinion, the vibrato, I actually think it's just about perfect because it's not over the top. Um, and it's not un it's not too understated and, and just completely uh, dispassionate either. It, to me, it just sits right in the middle. But again, just keep in mind, no portamento, no vibrato controls. And also, you're probably noticing there's no key switches. Each uh, articulation has its own individual patch. So let's go ahead and play with the legato a little bit. And again, if you hold down your sustain pedal, you'll get the rebo effect.
You can just really, I, I don't know if you could hear it in there, but there's, you can hear just a little bit of portamento every now and then that just seems to kick in, at least for me, at the right time. I really, really like it. And I also like, I honestly, you know, maybe, maybe my memory's lagging here, but I can't remember many string patches with a legato that, you know, you could hold down. It's very much like a synth lead where when you hold it down and you take off, if you're holding one note down and take off the other notes above or below it, it will re-trigger that note. So you can get into some really fast legato doing that like this. I really like that. Anyway, the legato, I really, really like the legato. Let's, just for a comparison here, let's go to the violins B legato so that you can get a feel for the difference that they make here. And getting back on track here, let's go ahead and get into the longs. Let's go to the alt sordino. Actually, you know what? Let's go back to the legato alt sordino, which we've not done yet. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the violas. We've spent a long time so far on the ensemble patches and on the violin, so let's go ahead and get to the violas. Here's the collegno. Turn on the close mic here. Go ahead and jump to the consordino, throw on some surround here. Really beautiful. I love that consordino. Whether or not it was recorded as such, it sounds fantastic. Harmonics again. Let's go. Let's go kind of wild with the ambience of the room.
Now there is a perfect example of the difference between the denoised samples and the ones that are the original samples. Because I don't know if you could hear it there, but there's just a little bit of color added to those samples. It sounds just a, it sounds a little bit more human. It's a little bit more lifelike. I mean, there's a little bit, I don't know, a little bit of imperfection, which I think actually makes it more, uh, more, I don't know, it sounds better, it more, it's more attractive, it's more real sounding. So just something to take note of. All right, let's go with, let's go to the legato first of the violas and then we'll go back. So maybe, maybe the deca, the wide and the close. Those little grace notes that you were hearing were not so graceful grace notes. Um, that was my fault. I'm actually holding down. Uh, I, I have a habit kind of like on synth leads where I'll hold down that bottom, usually my thumb and continue to play the lead line above it. And sometimes that doesn't always work out. <laughs> so not an imperfection in the library folks. Really, really nice. All right, going backwards, back to that Alt Sordino legato. All right, let's jump over to the longs. One thing I'm, I like a lot about this library as well is for a modern string library to load this quickly. And friends, I, I don't have this on an SSD. This is on a, um, a 7200 RPM hard drive. So it, it's going really, really fast, uh, the load times. I really appreciate that. Let's jump over to the pizzicato. And let's go to the spiccato. Again, that's where that sample delay comes in and throws off your timing. So, you know, if you want to turn that off, boom, but remember it's going to compromise the sound. So as an example,
versus... Really, really like the spiccatos a whole heck of a lot. All right, let's move to the cello folder. Let's go to the collegno. I love the uh, the fact that they included so much of the uh, width of the cello range. I mean, you can see here, you just really have a broad range here. And you know, a lot of string libraries, they just don't give you that kind of breadth when it comes to, you know, uh, all of the notes included. So I really appreciate that they did that. So you can go all the way from actually, C1, all the way from C1. To G sharp four, that is quite a range. All right, let's go to the consorts. Again, let's use the consorts here to check out the mics once again. So let's start with the close. Let's move to the Deca. And the wide. around really really nice and the harmonics actually well you know what let's change let's switch it up a little bit let's go with a lot of surround with some close detail Very, very gorgeous. All right. And let's go ahead and jump down to the regular legato. How about we throw a little wide on here? And again, you can also, something I didn't mention, you can pan the mic positions as well. So as you can see here, you can do that.
and as a comparison, the Alt Sordino. And let's go with the Alt Sordino Longs. I mean, that's just really beautiful. Gosh, let's listen to that with a little bit more of the room in it. Just all right, Mercado. Really nice. And pizzicato. And again, sample delay. <laughs> All right, spiccato. I'll try and go a little slower on these so they don't sound quite as crazy off rhythm. Let's go ahead and move to the bases and the Collegno first. These bases are rich. Check it out.
really, really rich and full. Let's just do the Deca and the Wides this time with the Consordino. I mean, that is, that's nasty in a, in a good way. <laughs> Harmonics. All right. Again, let's throw some ambience on these. Make massive major ambience. Dang, I, I just love those harmonics. So freaking beautiful. All right, let's start with the regular legato first. I mean, that, that bottom end is just freaking raunchy in the best kind of way. That is so good. All right. Alt Sordino Legato. Uh, actually, we just did the regular legato, didn't we? Let's do longs all sorting now. Let's just go with the regular longs. Mercado. and pizzicato. And 
Spiccato. And Tremolo? Tremolo? Gosh, I'll get it right one of these days. I mean, that almost sounds like a drum roll. It's really, really good. Check it out. All right, enough of the individual instruments. Um, I know we've already been here an hour. So just a couple of other things I wanna point out. There is an alt cello spiccato and an alt cello pizzicato. And of course you've got the bees as well. Um, so this is, uh, this is one thing I wish I had seen for each of the instruments. So it's really nice to have that second spiccato. That is one of the weaknesses that I've found is I wish there were more short notes in this library. The short notes are just so, so good. What is in here is excellent. I would just, you know, being greedy here, maybe some, uh, maybe some staccato, some staccatissimo, you know, it, it would, I, I just really, uh, I like having those extra short choices. So here's an alt spiccato on the cellos. And finally, let's just go through a few of the symphonic instruments just to give you, actually, let's go through the full ensemble so that you can get an idea. Um, I really like how these are done. So let's do like, for instance, the Gladiator Mix Dark. And it's really a multi, this is a multi in the symphonic, but because it's the full ensemble, but you can see it's actually combining so you've got like a faux sordino here and what they've done is actually done a deca and a close here and then a surround on the second one. beautiful. And how about we go through the spiccato in the symphonic mix. And again, taking the spiccatos with the spiccato B from each of the violin, viola, celli, and basses. So you get that more full symphonic sound. And again, I'm going to play slow spiccatos so that we don't get out of time with that sample delay. help if I stayed in key. And let's go down to 
the multis here. Just a few things I want to show you really quick. These cello slurry shorts. It combines the spiccato and the trills. So just an interesting combination here. And I love this, the low octave legato. Check this out. Just really, really cool. All right, last one of the day. Low octave spiccato. And that, my friends, is Nashville Scoring Strings. Um, really, really great library. The, I, I really love, first of all, the room. I think the room is amazing. I love the shorts. I love the fact that those are sourced from actual performances, from you know phrases instead of just individual samples. You can really tell because they live and breathe. I love the fact that the developer has included both the denoised samples and the um, the original samples, which I personally love the original samples. We didn't have time to go through the uh, noise reduction samples. Suffice it to say, there's not a real big difference there. I mean, you really do have to kind of listen closely to tell, but the difference to me is not so much in the sound as the energy. The original samples just seem to have an energy and a life that the denoised samples, just in my opinion, don't have. They still are excellent. They're great for, you know, studio quality. You're not going to get any chairs squeaking and all of that kind of thing. Um, just really, really overall, just a great library. Um, is this my favorite string library? I don't know. I, I really love it. Uh, one thing I do know though, is that it adds color. It adds an additional color to my orchestral palette that I didn't have. Something that's full with those mic positions. I mean, those mic positions are just really, really great for adding a sense of realness and space. And one thing I will say about this library, I was comparing it to some of my other strings. And one of the things I absolutely loved was just the fact that they all sit together so well in the room. I have some really, really great string libraries, but I gotta say, this one seems to sit in the room better than just about just about any other one I've tried. Um, there's just something about when you put a composition together, it just all feels like it belongs in the same space instantly without you really having to try, which is, you know, as a composer, that's excellent. As a working composer, that's even better, right? Because you get to, uh, you know, you get to sit down and make music fast without tweaking a lot of EQ and a lot of reverb and all of this kind of thing. So again, very dry library which means you get to add your own reverb, which I personally like. Some things to keep in mind though, again, no portamento, no vibrato control, no key switches. So if that's if key switches are a problem for you, you know, that's something to keep in mind. I would have liked to have seen more of the shorts. Maybe that's something we'll see added in the future, but again, the shorts that are there are really, really, really excellent. Audio Ali, you did Nashville proud. Thanks for checking out Nashville Scoring Strings with me today. So what do you think about it? Is Nashville Scoring Strings an instant buy for you? Will this become your go-to string library? Have you already purchased Nashville Scoring Strings? If so, what do you think? Let us know what you think below in the comments. We would love it if you would like this video and share it with your friends and even subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure to check out samplelibraryreview.com to get more video reviews like this, as well as checking out our weekly deal compressor.